That's it. Okay. Yeah, that's recording. We're a little far from each other. You don't like you know each other very well, but. What do you want us to do? Be like holiday kids? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hey guys, my name is Dev. This is Thiago Barbosa, our instructor Ooh. for the past three days. He's been hosting this great Centropics workshop class. It's my first exposure to Centropics and my first time doing an agroforestry workshop period. Uh, one of my friends, Chris, who was actually just checking our angle, she recommended this class and honestly, it was so great. I'm not going to talk too much about it. You guys will hear that afterward. I'd like to give the platform to Tiago Barbosa and have him tell you guys what the class was about and what his mission is. Happy days. Uh, my name is Tiago. Um, I'm a Brazilian living in Australia and I've been coming to Florida uh, for the last few months. And we've been running this series of agroforestry workshops um, here, uh, this one specifically in Punta Gorda, Florida. And the workshop is a deep understanding, not only ecological, but philosophical about what planet that we live is all about. What it takes for plants to give the food to us and where to place a plant in your garden. When I mean where to place it, I understand that each plant, every plant comes from a forest ecosystem. So where they are placed there naturally, they are not by itself. They are with plants next to it, plants on top, plants underneath it. There is a community of plants uh, together. And I like to reflect that to the body i feel i see like a plant is like an organ of a body right. if i'm taking your heart or my heart and place in your body it would be very wise to place that heart as close as possible to its original original place right if i try to be as smart as and shift the angle a little bit it might not work your beautiful heart healthy heart might not function on its optimum condition. So when you take a plant, a mango, avocado, coconut, so whatever plant or banana, whatever plant you're taking out of the forest ecosystem, right. out of the bodies of forest, and we try to take that out and place in our garden, it would be very wise to put the group of plants around it. I call it the support species, the same way that we have our system body but inside of the system body we have the lymphatic system the circulatory system the digestive system the muscular system and endless systems within systems that we have here the forest is the same we have the um, ecophysiology of the single plant the group the system of the group of plants divided by time and space you know and what it takes for that plant or that organ plant to have the best condition to thrive, not to just be sustainable, you know? Right, right. That was <laughs> he's a big wordsmith. He uses a lot of a lot of clever plays on words. And one of them that I caught on was actually uh, centropics. Essentially, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the background? I know you mentioned Ernst um, and how this was actually a practice that was done. Um, before you and you've been carrying it over to Australia yeah. and other places um, one thing I guess this is like a quiz for me is that you mentioned that entropy is like the loss of life and then syntropy is the direct opposite of that you're creating life you're accumulating life over time regeneratively you okay so time. within systems uh, there are these forces that guides all life forms you know right. and this force uh, could work on an entropic way or on a syntropic way. In an entropic way, uh, what is a system that is entropic or, or this action or interaction entrop entropically with the system? It is systems that lose energy. For example, if this body here keeps losing uh, the complexity, keeps losing energy, uh, we will end up dead, <laughs> you know? And so, but a body that's working within syntropy or syntropically it is a body that is accumulating energy is moving towards more complexity so syntropy moves from simple to complex and accumulates energy entropy moves from complex to simple and loses energy 
and that we try to use that um, natural force to work within our food production system or our agroforestry system or our forest system or our ecosystem. Right. You mentioned um, working with these different types of forest or farming operations that didn't have access, like you said, like we're spoiled here in America. How, like for me, in my instance, my YouTube channel, I posted about bringing in tons of like dumps of mulch and I just get that for free. And I'm thinking like, oh, okay, I'm building soil that way. And one of the biggest mind blowing things was that the things I took for granted, like grasses, you said that we could turn that to like living mulch. That's completely um, opposite of what I'm used to because I'm fighting with Bermuda grass and now you're telling me to plant it intentionally. That's, uh, that's crazy. I think to be very broad on our explanation is we, we try to turn the enemy into an ally. Right. So we, whichever is the enemy, uh, in term, I call enemy, you guys call it, or we all call enemies, the weeds mm -hmm. or plants that we don't want that to be there. So all those plants, all these enemies, or all these elements in the system, they have a function. It's like, again, reflecting to the body. Imagine like, if I don't know the function of my kidney and I just decided, say, I don't want a body with a kidney, let's remove it out of there. Right. And the body might collapse, you know, or a body needs a life support system. In your case, you see having mulch coming from outside. It's pretty much a life support system that you are relying on until you don't get it anymore. And then you have a system that has 10 people working with you, depending on that, on that mulch, you know? And then you have uh, like all your customers that are se you're selling food, they're all relying on that. And then out of the blue, it's th that free mulch is not available anymore. What do you do? We saw that happen when gas prices went up, when fertilizer prices went up. A lot of people that are relying on these different things in the supply chain um, is very fragile, just to say the least. And then basically what we do in these uh, trainings here is we, t we teach people how the whole system works and how we can try to be more self-sufficient. How can we provide everything that we need for the system within the system? The system. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I'm going to give my testimonial about this course. Uh, I'm more of a person of application. Um, like Tiago said, like a lot of the stuff he was telling us in the past three days between the heat and everything, like some of it was going to go over <laughs> our heads, but we're going to get in contact. We're going to stay in contact. Yeah. Hopefully we can bring them down to the farm. Um, and you guys are going to be able to see some of what I've learned today. Uh, I'm going to post Tiago's course in the description in the YouTube video. I'm going to blast them out, logo everything. Um, and I will, guys, I'll tell you more about what's to come. Thiago, I'm sure you're going to continue this curriculum, and I see a lot of happy faces over there. The connection was amazing, <laughs> meeting so many other people who are just willing to learn and willing to turn the, turn the wheel and change the system, just like Thiago is, is very inspiring. But that's it for this, guys, and um, Thiago, we'll stay in, in contact. Happy days! Happy days! <laughs> Thank you.